first order of business, let's just get these paper wallets out here. I know that's what everybody is here for. <laughs> Thank you. So we'll actually just pass them around. Okay, so let me explain. Let me let me get one for me. Okay, so let me explain what these are. Uh, so these are uh, paper wallets. Uh, each one controls one uh, pay to taproot uh, output uh, that has that's worth 10k sats um, that I created yesterday or day before yesterday in this uh, thick transaction. Oh, no, 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 that's bad. Apparently there's, there's Wi-Fi. I don't know how this is gonna work as a workshop, like because people are gonna need to connect to the internet or I'm gonna have to like type everything in for them. That's probably what's gonna happen. Um, let's see what's going on here. Oh, am I even not on the internet? <laughs> this is bad. Is it like IHG connect yeah. or something? Yeah, it's like slow. Yeah. Balls, uh, oh yeah. Are balls slow? Yeah, super <laughs> slow. Um, yeah, so this is the transaction that created all the paper wallets. I do use Bitcoin Core's like send many function, which is not good. Um, anyways, yeah, so these are paper wallets. Uh, the private key is on the back. Uh, it's a BEC32 encoded string. If you decode that, that's just a 256-bit um, SecP 25K, 265K1 uh, secret key. Um, and then that directly derives the single um, pay to taproot address that contains the funds. Um, there's the public key, which is uh, like a representation of the public key. It's not the same as the address. It's just the public key. Um, the SAT count, they're all, they all say 10,000. And then this is the fun bit. These are the ordinals. Yo, where's the paper wallets? Yeah, please take a uh, paper paper wallet. It's got 10K sats on it. Pri sats. Private keys on the back. Um, so I was just saying that, um, and this like little half open range, these are the ordinals that are on this particular uh, output. So it includes the first ordinal, but it does not include the last ordinal. So the last ordinal on the wallet is the second number minus one because it's a half open range. Um, and what if our numbers are the same? Uh, they're not. They're, there's like oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, there's, yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah, 10k, yeah. so it, only one digit will be different. It's it's a little confusing. No, you're right. Thank God. <laughs> it's gonna be like oh my God, I fucked no, this no, all no, up. I, I just sats. can't read. So. <laughs> um, okay, cool. I, I see a lot of people in this room who I've already just like shilled ordinals to, um, but we're gonna go over ordinals again. Like what are they? Um, so let's go. So today's agenda is who am I? Ordin ordinals. Uh, what does that have to do with NFTs? And then uh, paper wallet NFT minting party with free sats. Let's go. Uh, so please, at any time, just interrupt and ask questions. Uh, this is just meant to be interactive. Uh, if you have questions, other people surely have it too. Uh, there really are no dumb questions. Um, and like really noob questions are super welcome. Um, like one thing that I think is fun about ordinals as a scheme is that it, it, it very closely kind of maps to the way that Bitcoin works, like the way the transaction work, transactions work, the way that blocks are mined, the way that inputs and outputs are structured in transactions. And so it's an opportunity to like learn about those things and wonder about those things. Um, yeah, let's see. So yeah, I'm just this guy. Um, I really like Bitcoin. Uh, I really like Rust and I really like generative art. Um, the last big project that I did um, that kind of went nowhere was this thing called Agora. It's still going. I mean, it's going. I, who knows where it's going? But um, it's basically like the store for selling Lightning Network payments, uh, for selling downloads in exchange for Lightning Network payments. So it's like self-hosted, hook up your Lightning node. If you want to run pirate Netflix, this is the way to do it. Like seriously, that's what it's for. Um, just sell the movies. Um, let's see. And so then like ordinals. So what is the point of ordinals? Um, I've made a lot of uh, generative digital art. And so a lot of the times when things happen in the shitcoin world, I am like, it's not tempting to me. Like it was never tempting to be like, you know, mint a bunch of ICO tokens and like dump on retail or like make a bunch of ridiculous claims about some, you know, other network that aren't gonna come true at all, you know, cause it's just bullshit. I could be on an island right now, but I'm not. I'm in here <laughs> giving out paper wallets with $2 of stats on them. Um, but when I saw NFTs, a lot of them 
didn't appeal to me at all. A lot of them, especially when they make fake claims about like utility or they have crazy roadmap or like this is the future of commerce. But like, I don't think that there's inherently anything wrong with like making something cool and shiny and being like, this is cool and this is a cool, shiny cultural object. Like, do you want to pay the artist for it? Like that, I just don't think there's anything wrong with that. And I wanted a way to um, do NFTs that would be like, that I could use for my own art that would be really simple, that would be based on Bitcoin. Um, and like Ethereum is just so bad. It's just so bad. Like even for the most basic use case, free sats, yo, get a fucking, get a, um, <laughs> like, like it's just so ridiculous. I thought, I, I was thinking like, oh, like, okay, maybe I'll just do it on Ethereum. Like Ethereum's like not good, but like, um, you know, all I want to do is, is sell these like tokens, like how bad could it be? And it's like, it's so bad. Like the, 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 the semantics are bad. The development process is bad. It's centralized. It's getting more centralized. Like the wallets, they do blind signing. Ethereum wallets, they have no fucking clue what they're signing. So you can't really make a hardware security, a hardware device that's secure in any mean, meaningful sense because you just send it these blobs and it goes like, cool story, bro, and signs them and sends them back. It has no idea what it's doing. Um, so it's like, yeah, and I wanted something to do that on Bitcoin that would be secure and that would be very simple. Um, like uh, just something, and also something that would feel very like naturally uh, suited to Bitcoin. Um, yeah, and another important thing, no modification of the protocol. It doesn't require any changes to Bitcoin. It already works. So yeah, what are ordinals? So the problem that ordinals are kind of trying to solve is that um, on other chains, you have a, an account model. So you have some sort of notion of a, an account or an identity that persists over time, right? Like on Ethereum, you create an Ethereum wallet and you have your one public Ethereum address that that's gonna be your address for life. And that's what, um, that's what um, you like send things to. That is the owner of things, right? It's your like identity on chain. Bitcoin doesn't really have any notion of a stable identity. Bitcoin has UTXOs, but UTXOs are created and destroyed on demand. Yo, welcome. Oh. Yo, come grab some free sats. So Bitcoin has UTXOs, but UTXOs are designed to be impermanent. They're created and destroyed as wallets. Um, like, you know, your, your wallet, a transaction, takes some UTXOs from the UTXO set, destroys them, and creates some new ones. So they're not kind of meant to be of these persistent identities. Um, and then second, Bitcoin, Bitcoin addresses are similarly not meant to be persistent identities. You, a wallet should use many of them. It should also be, be able to rotate them, right? Like if, you're, if you suspect that your keys are compromised, you should be able to switch to a new key, right? And if you were to use a key as like the indelible owner of some asset, or it would be, you know, not, not good. So I wanted something that sort of fits in. So what are ordinals? Ordinals are basically just serial numbers for Satoshis. Every single sat has an ordinal number and every single ordinal, ordinal number corresponds to one Satoshi. Um, they're called ordinal numbers because they are assigned in the order that Satoshis are mined. An ordinal number in the mathematical sense is a number like first, second, and third. Um, so if you say that is the third car, that is an ordinal number. That's distinct from saying there are three cars, that is a cardinal number. Uh, a cardinal number gives the amount of something, an ordinal number gives the order. So you can sort of think of ordinals as giving, uh, as being uh, serial numbers for Satoshis assigned in order. Uh, and there's a lot of them, right? Because there's a lot of Satoshis. Um, so they go from zero in the Genesis block. The Genesis block contained ordinals zero through five billion minus one. Uh, the second block contained ordinals five billion to 10 billion minus one. Um, and let's see. Okay. And so that describes how ordinals are um, assigned. Uh, every new block subsidy, the block subsidy is the new coins that are coming into existence gets the next that many ordinal numbers. Um, and then the way they're transferred is very, very simple. It's just a, oh, do you have a question? Uh, yeah, like, these are assigned at, like, at the Coinbase. Like, it's, there's like a list where these exist. Oh. I, I guess I'm not clear on that. Yo, get some free sats. <laughs> Let's go. So, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, so that's an excellent question. It's a question a lot of people have. Um, there is no on-chain data 
or yeah. like on-chain action that assigns ordinals. This is pretty interesting. Yeah, no, this is just, it's sort of like a collective. It's a, it's a, yo, oh, get oh, some oh. free sats. It's free. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, I have to go there. Um, so yeah, it's like, there's no on-chain data. Um, ordinals, it's, it's as if ordinals have, have, have existed since the very genesis block. There's no data that encodes that. You just go like, okay, like this, this many free sats, come get them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, free sats, come get them. Very welcome. I came in here for the fifth. Let's party, yeah. I came in here for the free sats. Yeah, that's right. I mean, you can leave now. You can't leave. You have to. So, so yeah, there's no on chain data. It's just a, it's a, it's a convention that, you know, if you, if you subscribe to the convention, then you go and you go, okay, like this, this output created this sats. These these ordinals, there's no on-chain data. You're basically just proposing. Yeah, yeah, I'm just proposing this. The yeah, the scheme that people the can order opt them. into. Order them, not count. Total yeah. ordering. Yeah, total ordering. Yeah. Does that does that sort of answer your question? That makes a lot more sense than because I uh, yeah that makes more sense. I think it's really confusing. A lot of things, schemes have like on-chain. There's some sort of on-chain component to it. So I think it's a very natural question to to ask. So and then. Um, Okay, that sort of explains how, how ordinals come into being, but then you have to track, track them across transactions. And the way that they're tracked is, a is just the simplest algorithm that I can come up with. Um, I, I, I went through a lot of like iterations that, that just like I was grinding away simplicity, and they were more, like, more complicated, it was much weirder. Um, and so the algorithm is just that, you know, these are the inputs of a transaction and these are the outputs. And these are the values of the inputs. So let's say this one is worth two sets, one sat and three sats, and then it creates an output worth two, four and an output worth two. And in a transaction, the inputs and the outputs are ordered. They have a, a fixed order that is, that is, that is, that they're put in that order by the person creating that transaction. Um, and the transfer algorithm is just that the, uh, you sort of go through the inputs of the transaction and then you assign the sats that you find in the inputs to the outputs in order according to their value. You can sort of think as each of each input and each output as having a series of slots in which like an ordinal fits and you just like uh, take the first slot ordinal and put it in the inputs and put it in the first slot and the outputs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this shows you how it's done for these. So now these, within these brackets, they're not um, values. These are ordinals. So this is ordinal A, ordinal B, and these would be very large numbers. And then this output is just one, so it has ordinal C, D, E, F. And then so you can see the, the first output is worth four, and so it gets the first four ordinals in the inputs. And the second output with, is worth two, and so it gets the last two ordinals in the inputs. Does that make sense? What about what are the P ordinals? Or we'll, get, we'll get to that next slide. Good question. Is it is it based on uh, like how old the UTXO is, or like which is the first input? Oh no, the the the, the um, uh, is what based on how old the UTXO? Like the FIFO, the first in first out. No, whenever somebody creates a transaction, they take uh, the outputs that are available in their wallet, and they choose the order that they go in, and they can put them in an arbitrary order. Um, and similarly with the outputs that they create in that transaction, they can put them in any order. So Yes. Okay. So that could have been like A C D V instead of A B C D. Would that have mattered? Um, for the output. You want to you want to pick a certain order and then have everybody do the same. Right. That way, on chain, it looks like everybody's the same. Oh yeah. So it's, it's a le lexicographical ordering. Of so, inputs. Some some wallets do it randomly as well. Oh. There's yeah. two. Yeah. Like, but yeah. So a, a non-ordinal aware wallet or a cardinal wallet, <laughs> as you can call it. Like, uh, the, what they'll do is they'll either put it in some fixed deterministic order or a random order, which is good for privacy, right? You don't want, yeah. But an ordinal aware wallet that's like trying to do things with ordinals would choose the order and value of the inputs and outputs. But sorry, I didn't get to your question. I, I'm just trying to understand. So the, the last example there where you have A, B, C, D, E, F mm -hmm. in, in order, would you be able to, in one of those outputs, say like A, C, D, B, like, you know, just like switch up the... Um, or would that even matter? Uh, so the, 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 the order, the ordinals in, in a given input or output are, or the ordinals in a given UTXO are like fixed. You can't change the, 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 the order of the ordinals in an output. 
but you can choose their order in the transaction. So sure, sure. For, oh, sorry. So like for example, the ABCD output, would you be able to make that C A B on which side? On the right hand side. Let's see. I think you'd only do it on both sides. The order has to be the same on both yeah. sides. So, but are you saying like, could you like, let's say, I mean, so you could, if you have these three inputs, okay, right? Yeah, would you be able to make C first since it's an independent input? Oh, sure, yeah, yeah. So if That's you can, yeah, if you control these inputs, yeah, then you could say, okay, I want C to go first, I want Yeah, because yeah, you, know, you just have it in perfect order, so I was just trying to make sure oh, right. that that's not a constraint. Oh, right, that's right. But that's within right, yeah. one UTXO, it has to be in order. So you yeah, yeah. That's not, that was the right, point. No. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, exactly. So let's say you wanted like C, D, and F to all go to the same output, or C and D to go to the same output. You could do like C, D, and then then you could do E, F, A, B, right? Okay, yeah, yeah that was my question. Perfect, yeah, yeah, you have a lot of flexibility when you um, construct transactions um, to like get the, um, get the uh, inputs, oh wait, where am I, there we go. To get the, to, to move your like ordinals around, like if you wanna like slice them up and like get them to go to particular places, you can do that a lot, except uh, the, there's the dust limit. So mm -hmm. you have to do some trickery to avoid the dust limit. Um, and then your question, what about fees? So basically, um, here's an example that pays fees. Um, and it pays fees because this is one, two, three, four, five, six sats on the left side, four sats on the right side, so it pays two sats in fees. And basically, the, um, the fees, the, the, the fee ordinals, they go back as they're sort of virtual inputs to the uh, Coinbase transaction. So they go back to the miners. This is kind of like not a great example because um, it um, only has one fee paying transaction. So you might imagine like, well, what if there's more fee paying transactions? So let's say they have X, Y, Z, and then uh, this one, X, Y, and this is in the same block, right? So these are two transactions. And this transaction pays as fees E and F, and this one pays as fees Z. So then it's as if, this is like ordinal reckoning for the Coinbase transaction. If the Coinbase transaction only creates one output. It gets first the new ordinals in the subsidy, and then it gets sort of an input for every fee paying transaction in the block. So that's how fees work. They just kind of recycle back to miners. So ordinals are never destroyed, except in some rare, rare circumstances. But um, yeah, they just go back to miners. Um, and this is what I mean about simple. So this is sort of the full concrete specification of ordinals, it's the whole thing. Um, this function just returns the amount of coins assigned in a block. This function just returns the number of the first ordinal assigned in a block. And this, um, this function goes over the um, transactions in a block and figures out which transaction outputs get which ordinals. Um, and that's it. Um, I won't belabor the point too much, like by going through this, but um, it's very simple. There's there's not a lot of like weird stuff in there. That's just for like the Coinbase like, first start. No, this is the transaction. So this is for transaction in block dot transactions. Everything but the Coinbase transaction. Um, sort of put the ordinals and the inputs in a list, and then assign the outputs um, in a list, and then anything left over goes to the Coinbase ordinals. And then this assigns the ordinals to the outputs of the Coinbase transaction. Yes. Uh, do, do you imagine this being used with significant amounts, or is this always probably going to be like close to like the dust limit, like kind of ideas? Like, what, what's your thoughts there? I have no idea. I mean, I, 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 this is sort of like a fun art project for me. Um, so, like, I think, like, like, yeah, I think it's best for things that you're like, yeah, one ordinal you want to assign a meaning to it. But there's no reason that it, as long as your tokens that you're assigning are significantly more valuable than a Satoshi, you could do, you know, you could, you could do like, a, a, like, let's say I wanted to issue a stable coin on ordinals. I take like a million dollars uh, in a million dollars and I put it in the bank and then I issue a million uh, ordinals that, that you can redeem them from me for $1. You know, in that case then, yeah, you could have blocks of many ordinals that are all fungible and are all sort of like worth something. But like every time, I guess. Sorry, I, I feel like uh, I have a lot of questions, so I don't. Want to I, I I think going. that's I think yeah. that's fine. Let's 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 yeah. I think other people. Okay, so maybe questions. can you the stablecoin idea that you just brought up as an example? Can you uh -huh. break that down? Uh, let's say you have 
a million people mm -hmm. that want to participate. Yeah. Is that even possible? Or already oh. because you have a million people, you can only have a middle, m million orbitals and you have to have a little buffer for each fee or... Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I mean, saying? yeah, yeah, certainly. Yeah, I mean, there are, like, yeah, there there'd are... There would be a hard limit depending on how many uh, individual people could participate depending on how big that size is, right, that you allocate? Uh... Whatever. Uh, right. Well, I mean, like a stablecoin sort of already has that problem because, like, you like, however many stablecoins you issue, that's how many people can participate. You could continue issuing new blocks of these stablecoins as new ordinals. I mean, I think the real problems are with like efficiency, right? Like, you have to do a Bitcoin transaction for each one of these. You have to pay fees. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so for instance, like you were talking like two hundred Sats per ordinal or whatever. So that means like you'd have to take a million divided by two hundred. Oh no 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 no! Each each ordinal is a single satoshi. Yeah, but then you need that ordinal to survive with some fees so it can live. Right. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Probably what you would do in a in, if you wanted if you wanted to do this for real is yeah. you you would have a wallet and it would have all these like ordinal outputs and then you would have outputs that had like trash satoshis <laughs> that like cardinal satoshis that didn't have any meaning associated to yeah. them. And then you would merge those in to pay fees, yeah. and then merge them out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So Good. your fees would come. Your fees would come from non-ordinal um, outputs. Gotcha. But yeah. every satoshi can be an ordinal to somebody. What's that? Every yeah. satoshi can be an ordinal right. to somebody. So there might be trash to you, but it could be one man's <laughs> trash. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One man's trash is another man's NFT. Should really be the uh, motto of the project. If someone needs a hackathon idea, build an ordinal wallet. Yeah. So what are ordinals good for? Like, um, just like any time you want, like, a token. I wish the word token wasn't so, like, like bad, right? But it's like people have been, like, making tokens and trading tokens, like, forever. Just They just want to give some meaning to something, and they want to trade it, whether it's, like, art or it's some claim on something. Um, unfortunately, most tokens these days are shit coins, but for your non-shit coin tokens, uh, there you go. And, and, and what does it mean to own an ordinal? Well, because every ordinal can be traced to an, an output in the UTXO set, you, and somebody controls the private key that corresponds to the address of that UTXO, and that person can sign challenges that prove that they own that ordinal. Um, and then they can also send it by, by spending that UTXO. Um, what else are ordinals good for? Aesthetics. Uh, I think it's a very aesthetic um, you know, uh, uh, project, and also supporting the fee market. We need a fee market. Um, so they're very block space inefficient. Um, so uh, it supports the security of the network oh, by yeah. subsidizing with miners. With art. Yeah, with art, yeah. Um, as another aside, so I made all these like... 29420. Yeah, so uh, I, I came up with this like wacky like trade system. So like there are rare ordinals. Uh, the first ordinal in every block is rare. <laughs> right? So there's there's one per like million dollars of Bitcoin, so they're pretty rare, right? And then there's then there's then there's then there's epic ordinals, okay? An epic ordinal <laughs> an epic ordinal is the first um, ordinal after a difficulty adjustment. Ooh. So that's one every two weeks. I think there's like one per like I, I don't know, like 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 hundred million or like twenty seven million. Ordinal. That's a legendary ordinal, my friend. Wow. There are only three legendary ordinals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you can get, and I, I, I created a, a bounty. Like, I have a prime number ordinal. There, yeah, yeah, yeah. Prime number ordinals. A lot of like sixty-nine ordinals. Anything in the first million. Most of them. You can't get because yeah. the, the 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 coins. Yeah. The, 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 yeah. They're all, no, they're all in the Genesis block. They're all in the they're Genesis right. block. Yeah. I also came up with a naming scheme to map ordinals to names. Um, yeah. So so there's only so if you get a legendary ordinal, I'll pay you one bitcoin. One bitcoin, motherfucker. Unfortunately, there's only three of them, so your chances are low. Um, the only thing that I can think of is make deposits, to, like withdrawals from an exchange. Filter out the valuable ordinals and then send it back, and so then you can just drain their that you can drain their hot wallet of shiny ordinals. Yeah, that's actually a really good idea. Is it though? I mean, let's be real. Yeah. So then there's also other like there, there's other easy ones. All of, a curse. There was one. There's one block way back in the day that underpaid the subsidy oh, yeah. right. by one sat. So like an ordinal was destroyed. So there's this one elusive ordinal 
Uh, that's the one ordinal that was destroyed. You can't collect that. This is a meme. Um, but then all the other ordinals in the block are cursed because something unholy was done in that block. And those I, I will give a bounty for. Um, there's other ones. I don't want to uh, go into them too much, but this is, these are real. These, these are all... Um, Have any been claimed? No. <laughs> no. Come on, bro. A friend, my a, friend of mine, uh, uh, a friend of mine said that he tried. I was so happy that somebody tried. I was, I was like overjoyed. I was like, thank you, bro. Um, so, uh, let's see. Let's this could be a fun hack project. Right? Yeah, That's yeah. That's what I'm saying. Um, so yeah, there's the bounties. So there's traits. So like you can collect ordinals. Ordinals are NFTs, each one. Um, and so I wrote an ordinal index um, at apis.ordinals.com. And so this actually shows you what the ordinal ranges are for a given output. You can just go hit this and read data out of my database. Um, it turns out that it, it only takes like a day to build the ordinal index. I had it build historical ordinal data of all time. That was impossible. That mapped like every, yeah, it was like a 10 terabyte database. It was real bad. So I had to abandon that. But yeah, so this is a big, this is like a Coinbase output. I think that is why it has a bunch of fees, like a bunch of small things. These are all the fees. Um, this is a smaller output. This is, I think, one of the wallet outputs. And this is one that has been spent because we don't track historical data. So let's see, let's, let's keep going. What are those got not good for? Okay, so there's the dust limit. If you create an output that's below a certain size, it's non-standard and it won't be relayed. So you have to do weird things to pad out your ordinals to avoid hitting the dust limit. Um, it's not very efficient with block space. Um, and if you need something that needs very high divisibility, uh, obviously it's not good because your, your minimum ordinal value is gonna be one sat, which is like you know a hundredth or a thousandth of a penny and, and going. Um, and then the database is like fucking heinous. Like, you want to build a database of ordinals, like it's bad, it's bad, it's so big. Uh, but you can do it, it actually, all the queries you want to do about ordinals are pretty tractable. Like, I was able to build a database that, that you can look up a UTXO and get the list of all the outputs, that is instant. Uh, I couldn't build a database that had an entry for every ordinal range, but, but if you have the right index, going from when an ordinal was mined to the current UTXO should be very, very fast. So you can tell which ordinals you have in a UTXO set, but you can't find an ordinal and tell which wallet is holding the UTXO. I don't currently implement that, but that's really easy. I just gave up on um, having it be a instant lookup, like having a, an entry for every every ordinal range. That is what was intractable. Okay. But for a given ordinal, you can easily calculate which block it was created in and then go from spending transaction to spending transaction until you hit something that the UTXO set. Okay. And with the right index, all those lookups can be done in memory almost instantaneously, so you could tr tr follow like thousands of transactions. Have you tried tracing any of your uh, special ordinals? Like, uh, yeah, yeah, I did, I did actually. I, I decrease its bouncing and have I, I found where the three legend, legendary ordinals are. Like, have they moved in? Uh, they're, they're, in they're in giant wallets. Like, that's kind of what you would expect. They're in, like, what must be, like, giant, like, exchange wallets or something. So, sifting through exchanges, you could find like, every Yeah. That's what I'm saying. This actually could be very valuable. Yeah. If you've got the SAS to spend on fees, going back and forth. Can you can move around the history like, like, of the exchange wallets? I don't think people are selling to the panners yeah. and the panners. Yeah. 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 yeah, Coinbase and the miners. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so, uh, at ordinal NFT. So I just came up with a really simple NFT standard for ordinals. So you take the ordinal number, the co content of the NFT that you want to issue, and your public key, and you concatenate them um, and hash them. This is just math for concatenate. I don't know why they do that. What's up? <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Sats have, I math, they have names. I made them have names. Um, like you can find like the Bob Sat out there. Um, so you hash it. You sign it, and then you append the signature, the data, and then you back 30 in code. And so this is what an ordinal NFT looks like. And it's completely off-chain. Um, it's NFT. Yeah. It's, it's private to the people who issue it. Like, you don't need to put it on-chain. You just have this, this, this file that encodes, like, the meaning of the NFT, and then you can track who owns it by looking at the ordinal number. Theoretically, could you... Could minor, large mining pools provide services to include them in block headers? Uh, to include the NFTs, <laughs> yeah. I, I guess you could. Oh, yeah, I'm. I'm really unclear. Is it an art exchange? <laughs> <laughs> I, it's it's sort of unclear to me if whether on-chain storage of data like NFTs actually like get buys you anything. 
Because like the people who want, they care about the NFT, they're incentivized to store the data, right? Um, mm -hmm. So it's kind of like if they want to view it. Yeah, if they want to view it, if they want to sell it, if they want to have an NFT marketplace, like there's there's all these incentives to store and make available the data. That it's not clear that it kind of needs the um, needs the yeah. Um, a pen signature data in back thirty two. Yep. So you're you're generating this NFT leading what, hash or whatever this is. How what is this fourth step? Oh oh, the fourth step is just shows the output, the back thirty two encoded output. So the NFT is this back thirty two encoded string. How do you get NFT at the beginning? It's just an example. That's NFT is just the human readable part of the BEC32 string. Uh, so a BEC32 string has a human readable part before the one and then the data payload after the one. Okay. Yep. Um, let's see. Disclaimer. Okay, so all this shit with these paper wallets is so insecure, right? Like, there's a fucking private key on the back, all right? Like, look at that. Look at that. That's gonna, getting recorded. But this, but all these have ordinals on. Yeah, this is a, it's a, each one has 10k sats. There's an output, and and I I I I think I still have the private keys to all of these on this this computer. I'll delete them. I mean, I won't steal your ordinals, but if you you know <laughs> they become incredibly valuable or something, like figure out how to transfer them so I don't know the private key. Um, wildly responsible. Obviously, wouldn't do this with, but it's two dollars. It's like whatever, you know. Um, yeah. But yeah, so the, the back is a private key. It's a SecP 32256K1 security key. It, it is used to derive a single pay to tap root address that controls a single output that's worth 10K sats. Okay, so now finally to the NFT minting party. I really don't know how this is gonna go. I guess we have internet, but the idea was is that everybody can mint an NFT with their, uh, to their like wallet, to their paper wallet. Um, so the idea is you just get a paper wallet, which everybody should have. You pick some file to NFTIs. It can be absolutely anything. Um, you pick an appealing ordinal from the ordinals on your paper wallet. I would suggest the first ordinal is sort of the obvious choice because if you want to move it, it's the least vulnerable to accidentally being spent as a fee. Um, so yeah. And then you use this program that I wrote uh, and we'll get to like how to install it. Uh, the program is called ORD. It's also the ordinal index. So ORD in, and this is just the path to the data that you want to um, make your NFT of. This is the ordinal number, and this is the BEC32 signing key from the back of your NFT, uh, or of your paper wallet. And then the output where you want to put it. So this will save the BEC32 encoded NFT to this output.nft. And then you run, the, the, the tool also supports this verified tool that tells you, like, is this a valid NFT signed by the public key on the front? So the, the idea behind, like, well, why is an NFT ever, like, valuable is um, that it was signed by somebody's public key. NFT is the only reasonable, like, reason to think that an NFT is, like, valuable is kind of based on what I call social legitimacy. It's this like soft concept. It's like, okay, well, did an artist mint this? Like, then it has social legitimacy. Did somebody just copy somebody else's art and mint it? Uh, then it doesn't have social legitimacy, even if it has the same content. So that's why the public key is sort of the inherent, the important thing. If an artist were to widely publicize their public key, then you would be able to verify that this was minted by that person with their public key, and thus it would sort of have value. So that's the whole sort of like idea and why public keys are important. Then uh, send it to me. Uh, I'll make some sort of gallery or something. This is my email and this is me on Telegram and Twitter, I think. Um, and then, yeah, Ord. So uh, you can download pre-built x86 binaries here for Linux, Windows, and Mac OS. Uh, if you have Rust installed or want to build it from source, you can just do this and order do cargo install Ord. It's on crates.io. Or I felt bad being like, hey, everybody, like, run this like weird ass program that I wrote, um, but I'll run it for you. So you can just come up to me, you'll have to send me what you wanna mint, but I'll like type it out and then I'll send you the JPEG or the, the NFT, that's the other option. Um, and then for extra credit, if you want, uh, I wrote this like, uh, like visuals engine, um, which if you can't think of something to like make an NFT of, uh, you can like, you can fool with this thing. Uh, let me see, degenerate.computer. And then you type in, first you go to this, you read this inscrutable manual, 
which is here, which actually has all the information you need, but it's, it's really complicated. And then you like type in an inscrutable degenerate program and then you get, you, you, it generates the visuals and then you, where's the, where's the output? And then you download the PNG and then you can mint this as an NFT. So if you don't have your own content, you don't have your own spicy memes you want to mint as a NFT, you could, you could mint a degenerate NFT. And then you can do all sorts of like, like wacky, wacky stuff with this. It's, uh, it's pretty. So how do people find though that art or the stuff that's associated with it? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, the, it's, it's the, it's the, you, you, you mint the NFT, right? Yeah. And then it's a file and then you can put that file anywhere. You can host it anywhere. Where do I right click say that's from? Uh, I guess, I mean, uh, I mean, you're gonna have to, you're, there's no right, so it's text, so you're gonna have to copy and paste. It's a little bit different from the normal right clip save, save as. But yeah, so this is, the, 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 the idea is that um, a, 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 an ordinal NFT is uh, sort of, uh, like, you can post it anywhere. So, so you're creating a link with an ordinal, mm -hmm. or you're creating an association. That's right. How does anyone know where that lives if they wanted to find it, how would they? Uh, yeah, I mean, so I mean, let's say you wanted to do like a like a marketplace for uh, uh, ordinal NFTs. You'd have to build that yeah, you database just, of stuff around it. Right, right, and in practice, you see all sorts of these like databases. I, I think probably if there was real economic activity around this, everybody would just like host them. Um, they're they're not trusted because you can't um, forge an ordinal or because you don't have or the issuer's private key. Uh, right. So uh, yeah, you could. In fact, yeah. store them in many places redundantly. Right. You could put them on BitTorrent. IPFS sucks balls, but put them on BitTorrent. BitTorrent is fine. You could have giant databases of them. Or like I'm when if people send me their NFTs, I'll just add that to like a GitHub repo. I'll just put it in the GitHub repo along with the content, and the NFT contains the content. So if you mint a one gig um, NFT, it's going to be a one gig text file. Uh, probably a bigger than one gig text file. Right. Yeah. So you can put music, you can put anything. Music. You put yeah, whatever file. you want. Yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, I guess we have 13 minutes <laughs> for the NFT minting party. But so, yeah, uh, questions or whatever, or just come up and ask me questions. Or if you don't want to install Ord, but you have something you want to mint, come up and I'll, I'll do that. So, like, pretty much go to that. Uh, I, I guess when you, when you build the. The org crate, you can you can just call that as an executable, like the way that you're doing in this example, like org mint. Uh huh. Yeah, that's right. Yep, yep, yep. And let me just show an example of, of executing it. Um, let me see what's going on here. So here we are in NFT party. Um, no, here we are in org. Um, and then I uh, mint. This is the mint command. Please no copy my private key. So this is what it looks like to run. <laughs> Uh, for <laughs> what's that? Yeah, like uh, 10k sats. Um, oh shit! Actually, if this is one of your private keys, ah, eh, whatever. Nobody's gonna sweep this. It's hard. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I just was like, okay, like the data. I'm just gonna use the CC0 license because it's what's in this directory. This is the ordinal that I was assigning it to. This is the signing key, which is that BEC32 encoded private key, and this is the output path. Um, <laughs> So there we go, it just did it. And if we look at um, license.nft, this contains the, this is the contents of the NFT, I just catted it. And then both verifies the contents, says that it's valid, says the ordinal number, the issuer, the data hash, and then prints out the actual contents of the NFT. So this is a way to like extract the verified contents from the NFT. Casey, can you go back to the commands? Oh yeah, yeah, let me go here, yeah. Actually, is there a way we can, um, like, uh, can we access this as a web page? From oh, yeah, case? yeah. Um, GitHub, let's see, github.kc.github. Uh, um, let's this? forget. Get out on my github.com, kc slash uh, I think you want, like, NFT party. Um, yeah, so if you go to github.com slash kc slash NFT party, <sighs> Uh, the, all the contents of the slides are in the readme.
<laughs> There's a table covered in sats. <laughs> First table covered in sats, I think, ever. Hey, you know, yeah. yeah. We could make it rain, finally. <laughs> That's right. Really just... These these can go in between a stri stripper's ass crack, yeah. right? Like... <laughs> we haven't made, made it rain sats yet. What are you waiting for? I, I still don't actually understand what I'm doing. Okay. Uh, but, but I'm doing it. Okay, sweet. Right? sweet. Yeah. I think the first step is to find like a spicy meme that you want to that you want to make. Yeah, I'm looking through my meme. Very understandable. Well, uh, can you do um, cargo install orders? Or did you? Are, are you, compliant? you should be able to do that. Oh yeah, yeah. This is the other part of it too, right? For the private key. Do you want to know that process? No, no, you do for key one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't want to. Uh, which I'm just doing it. Not going to be a good one. That's why the board. So I downloaded. Perfect. Yeah, it's very yeah. bad. Yeah. yeah. But that also like, downloaded like, the you know, binary. Like, yeah. yeah. People and, and you got many, many. I tried. I downloaded the, download the source code and then I also downloaded this. Right. So it's not, there's the, no pressure. You're not like using your ordinal. Okay. See, this is the part I don't get. I need more high-level stuff like that. Unverified developer. Okay. Yeah. And this is where I'm going. Yeah. Feel like we should. It, it, she must have I feel like that's the safest place to do. <laughs> 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 so, well, I'm, uh, IT can deal with it. They anticipate this kind of stuff happening. They anticipate our ineptitude. Yeah, we're, uh, <laughs> we're pen testing. What am I doing wrong? Let's see. Oh, uh, okay, so what did, did you install Wait, it? So or? Did you install Cargo? Oh, uh, I installed it on my own. I got it off GitHub. Um, uh, okay. Yeah. 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 What do I need to do? Do you, can you do we can, LS? We, we can mint NFTs. Okay, so um, did we'll you, uh, for, for let's see, did you download the GitHub and release type? Oh, okay, okay. So go to GitHub. Fucking weekends and evenings only. Yeah. And then this is an x86 Mac. Okay, I have that one too. So click, wait, wait, no, no, we go back to that. Power. What you want to yeah. do is, these are the pre-built binaries. Wait, so, so click okay. that. So now, then, and that'll the download it's that. Actually okay, cool. you did get that. Yeah, okay. I did. I yep, did that and then uh, open that up. Yeah, so that's just uh, working. Okay. So it's, it, the manual doesn't have any of the uh, stuff. Like, uh, okay, and so now go into this folder. That's your board binary. Or actually, let's make this easy. Invalid value, just run ordinal. Drag that binary to the desktop. No, 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 just the, uh, uh, no, that's, that's fine. This here? Yeah. Hey, uh, the, the, the third line of that command, ordinal, ordinal, what does that ordinal need to see? That, the number, line, yeah. an, like the, like the first number in your paper What's wallet. Oh, oh like the bullet point? Also on to generate that big computer. number? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is that is the the first number is the first ordinal in your in the in the output. The last number is the last ordinal. I love that. It's a range. Yeah, it's a range. It's a range. It's a range. Yeah, exactly. Okay, it's a, okay, okay. So every set is an ordinal. That's right. Yeah. Nope, an ordinal system. Really yeah, that's right. Like and every white. Because it, 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 it is connected to the deep so, light. Uh, so, but 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 uh, whether I do this or not, there's still ordinals that are according to that's right. Okay. Yeah. Like 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 that that uh, well, stats don't have serial numbers. Okay, but this serializes. That's right. The serialized the serialized sat is he has an ordinal number. Yeah, each sat is like a cow. Okay. And the ordinal is like the brand on the cow. It's like a number. Practical steps to take. But I guess any number in that range. Uh huh. But in that one, oh, so you want to implement it? Go to the terminal. Yeah, go to the terminal. Go to the terminal. Yeah, that's probably pretty healthy. Okay, uh, go to like Control T or whatever. You want a new window? Control N, Command N. Yeah, and go to the go to the where it is. Like, what do you mean where it is? Like where on my desktop? Like, yeah, like the actual. So like, no, you don't want to open it. Okay. You want to you want to go to where it is in the terminal. Oh, okay. okay. So I'll just put this on my desktop. Oh, okay. okay. Three sats, bro. Yeah. Okay. It's on my desktop. So three just three literally, like, <laughs> in this uh, file path. So, uh, how long does it take? The best way to do that. So, cd to that directory. You have to have, yeah, you have to have. to that directory. Yeah, so here, go to your terminal. Okay. 
type okay, CD space desktop. Yep. And then CD on. space board. And then press tab. I have no idea what this is. Just put this in. This is my NFT, guys. <laughs> oh, after. There you go. I, I, I don't, I, I'm so happy. I just don't know why I'm happy. <laughs> just, just send it to Casey at Rotomore.com in an attachment so that I can make a gallery of the NFTs. <laughs> okay, but, but how do you visualize what I... NFT. Uh, like, how are you going to have the data or what? It's in there. You have to tell us. It's called Wait, gossip. the data is in the output? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Files are in the computer. Wait, wait. So, so if you, if you, if you a have a 10 gigabyte NFT the yeah. file, and you <laughs> output that, you're going to output a 10 gigabyte then they Oracle smash the file? Computer into yeah. Parts. And, and you're... You want to host all these for us? I mean, yeah, I guess. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but but what if what if I send what if what if what I send you doesn't isn't graphical? Oh, I mean, then I guess I'll have to figure out what it is from the content of the file. Obviously, like this needs some sort of like metadata or something. Yeah, because jump. in my case, mm -hmm. I ordinal defied your binary. I could probably figure what it is. It's 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 a it's a x eighty six binary which got some strings in it. Like it's got some magic numbers. You can figure out what it is. Yeah, I'm sure that's that's simple to do. No, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Files <laughs> source or target release orb. Whoops. File. Oh, whoops. Look at that. So, so you're going to use something like this to determine how it displays on your website? I guess. I haven't really thought that far ahead in advance. I was hoping most of them would be like PNGs or JPEGs or something. But, but once I, once I, okay. so you said earlier, it's like, hey, don't worry, like, you know, you do this, you can still add stuff to it. Uh, well, no, what I mean is you could assign multiple ordinals to the same, um, to multiple NFTs to the same ordinal. It's not like they get used. The same up. range. No, the same yeah, single it's ordinal. The same one. Yeah. Oh, one ordinal can represent many. Oh. It's, it's not like bidirectional, like it is. Oh wait, where? Okay, is so it in download? One ordinal. That's the thing. It's there. Can, oh, okay. There we go. I didn't realize it was there. So then, to run a, an executable yeah. in the okay. current and directory, you have to do dot slash, the and then you can do like the more than the number. <laughs> and then that shows you the. Okay. And then I can copy it. But there's no way of knowing how many. What is the picture that I sent up a cardinal slash? Wait, Casey. So now that's you give me the file. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, that's not going to work because you just, because you're in the you're you're running a command that's in the current directory. Right. So you need to do uh, dot slash or uh, Did you get ordinal? And then that'll oh, give you a uh, helpful Yeah. So then yes. it says you can't open it, but we can okay. open what it. Do, do, do I have to type out this package here? Yes. Let's do this. <laughs> yes, you do. That's what I was um, it's been so focused on my art. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, at, look at my, look at my, there you go. So, and then you can add the, it's going to be a snapshot of people. I don't know how to use Rust. Well, so, what did you whatever. say, Rogo? Well, that's not a lot. Do you have a sold board of Yeah, I said, uh, oh, sure. I mean, that's going to be, which I hope is the right the desktop. Or I just need to some other people. So, can you go to the alpha? And then just return it. Well, no, and then, yeah, and then, just don't, just don't, then, uh, or so the first stack yeah. oh, okay. yeah. and then put a new record that's on your. Uh, <laughs> you don't need the slash. Okay. The slash is just to break it into multiple lines. Yeah. Yeah. And then, so so you know, it's right. Right. Just, just keep adding each of these. Uh -huh. okay. Yeah. It's like you're not smart. I'm not trying to take too much. No, 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 no. Okay, so no, 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 Okay, so ordment. So now let's just add the arguments one oh, after another. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Just copy it. Well, no, don't don't copy it because the, the these things are just the um, placeholders. So first, uh, type dash dash data dash path. Dash dash. No, I'm dash dash. Dash dash. Wait, they don't do uh, on chain. Uh, gotta be. Uh, oh, are you talking about how? Uh, it won't make sense because Cash App doesn't have ordinals. And then space and then the path to... No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, so just find something. Yeah, yeah. So it's a meme, dude. Sassy comes in, so you don't own none of the sassy deposit. I was saying like, oh, to keep this safe since I we work for Cash App, I'll like on chain send this to Cash App so they can custody it for me. Uh huh. Yeah. They might lose your ordinal. You can get somebody else. No way. It'll be fine. It'll be fine, dude. But the one you receive might be more. Don't you work on that team? Can you implement ordinals for me? Can you make Cash App ordinal aware? Um, really yeah. Yeah. Can you make anime real? Sure. Yeah. Let's see. So, you wearing um, cash out? Are you in? Uh, he does. Yeah. Okay. Well, Mom, did you see Ryan's? So, office? where's the? Where did you? Uh, oh, guys. Hey, what's up? Oh, yeah. so, wait, does it time? Is, 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 is it over? All right. NFT party has come to an end. I will be in the hall. Oh, let's, no! let's relocate to the yeah. hallway. Because yeah. <laughs> 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 we're almost there. We're almost there. It's a bus, Max. It's a bus. <laughs> <laughs>